All right, let's get started. This video will make you rethink everything you know about marketing. The Sydney Sweeney Simulation. American Eagle just tested 4,000 ways to offend you and picked the most profitable one. A massive shift just happened this week that nobody wants to talk about. Sydney Sweeney wore jeans for American Eagle and just one, two, Days later, Dunkin' Donuts and Arby's launched campaigns with the exact same vibe. Down to the genetics wordplay and vintage Americana aesthetic. Six million people lost their minds on X, formerly Twitter. Stock prices jumped 10%. Everyone argued about whether great jeans was racist or genius. And the whole thing felt so perfectly calibrated that it made my skin crawl. Here's the timeline that shouldn't exist. July 23rd, American Eagle drops this campaign. Blonde hair, blue eye girl aesthetic, great jeans with her in jeans. Immediate viral explosion. July 27th, Dunkin' Donuts launches Gavin Casalegno talking about his genetics and perfect tan lines nearly identical visual language. Once again, viral explosion. July 29th, Arby's slides in with suspiciously similar aesthetics. No major controversy, but they ride the wave literally perfectly. So here's the thing. These are three different companies, three different agencies, three different approval processes, all landing within 168 hours with the same creative DNA. Now, I've worked in marketing for years. Campaigns take months. Creative reviews alone take weeks. Legal approval on anything remotely controversial takes forever. The level of synchronization does not happen by accident. What actually happened? Those campaigns were tested on digital versions of you before they ever went live. I know that sounds insane, but you hear me out. Right now, there are companies building what we call artificial societies, entire populations made from scrape data. Your tweets, your comments, your purchase history, everything you do online is now being fed into behavioral AI model simulations. These models don't just track demographics, they recreate how you think, how you react, what makes you angry? What makes you buy? Then they run simulations. Thousands of campaign variations tested on millions of digital twins until they find the perfect formula. American Eagle didn't just guess that the genetics wordplay would create the perfect controversy. They knew because they tested it on 12 million simulated consumers first. They knew exactly what percentage would be offended, what percentage would defend it, how the conversation would evolve hour by hour. The numbers tell the story. Just look for yourself at what happened after this launch this week. Attention, 6.2 million X impressions in 72 hours. Sentiment split, 42% negative, 35% positive, 23% confused. I want you to stick with me on that one. Engagement rate, 4.7 times higher than the typical fashion campaigns. American Eagle stock climbed from $10.82 to $12. Market value increase, roughly $300 million. These are engineered outcomes. When you can test every possible version of a campaign before you launch it, you don't hope for success. You are calculating it in another reality. Inside your digital twin. Here's how they build you. They start with everything you do online, how long you look at things, what you click, what almost you click and then you don't. They track your scroll speed, your pause patterns, the exact moment you lose interest. Then they feed it all into simulated environments with AI models that learn your communication style, how you express excitement versus frustration, what words you use when you're about to buy something, the phrases that make you trust or distrust a brand. Next comes behavioral modeling. They map your triggers. What combination of words, images, timing makes you most likely to share something? They identify your influence patterns, who you listen to, who then listens to you, how ideas spread through your network. Finally, they create your twin, a functioning simulation 
that reacts just like you would. Thousands of AI models in virtual environments trained on you where they interact with content and each other. Campaigns get tested, responses get measured, outcomes get predicted. So here's why everything feels fake now. Because it is. That organic viral moment you shared last month probably tested in a simulation first. That controversy that felt perfectly sized to drive engagement without destroying your brand, mathematically optimized. The trend that seemed to come from nowhere, they launched simultaneously by multiple brands who saw the same simulation data. So we used to live in a world where culture happened and then brands reacted, but now brands pre-test culture and we react exactly as predicted. The polarization mathematics, the most important part here. Here's the ugly truth that they discovered in these simulations. Unanimous positive response generates baseline engagement. Unanimous negative response gets about 50% more. But perfect polarization, where half love it and half hate it, that gets 4.7 times engagement. So guess what every campaign optimizes for now? Perfect division, the exact level of split that creates maximum conversation without permanent damage. The Sydney Sweeney jeans thing, yeah, sure she looked good in them, but it was calibrated to create precisely a 42.3% negative response. Why? Because testing showed that that was the sweet spot for viral spread while maintaining brand recovery. So who runs the simulations? It's not some shadowy conspiracy. It's honestly just boring corporate infrastructure that nobody pays attention to. Plantier sells simulation patterns to Fortune 500 companies. Anthropic and OpenAI offer enterprise behavioral modeling. Companies like WPP and Publicis have centralized insight engines that run simulations across all of their clients. McKinsey published a report showing a 91% ROI increase when using behavioral twins. Gartner predicts 95% of major brands will use audience simulation by 2027. Stanford researchers estimate that 73% already do. How do you know this one wasn't simulated too? This isn't coming, it's here, it's running, it's profitable, it's expanding. Your life as test data. Every time that you interact online, you're training your twin to be more accurate. That angry comment noted, impulse purchase, mapped. The video you watch three times, analyzed. Your twin gets better at being you every single day. And every day, brands get better at knowing exactly what will make you react. We're maybe 18 months away from simulations that predict individual behavior better than individuals themselves that'll know what you'll want before you feel the wanting, that can model not just purchases, but beliefs, relationships, life choices, how things spread within an ecosystem. So what does this mean for everything? Well, marketing used to be about creativity and intuition. Now it's about computational power and data access. The brands that win aren't the most creative. They're the ones with the best simulations. Small businesses, they can't compete with this enterprise simulation infrastructure. Influencers now become puppets, dancing to algorithmic optimization and then crying from the backlash. Authenticity becomes another variable to test and optimize. We're watching the end of organic culture and the birth of something else. It looks like culture, but runs on prediction engines. It feels like choice, but it operates on behavioral models. So. What do we do with this information? What do we do with this video? There's three types of people now at this point. There's basically three ways that you can exist in this new reality as a sim. The oblivious. You can keep scrolling, sharing, buying, thinking that you're making free choices. Perfect fuel, honestly, for the simulation engines, even mine. Most people live here, and honestly, maybe that's where they're the happiest. Then there's the aware. They see the patterns, but they feel powerless. They know what's going on. They know everything's manipulated, but still have to live in this world. Say in the comments if that's you, honestly. It's probably a majority of people. They become cynical, paranoid, exhausted from seeing all of these strings happen and play out in real time. The players, though, these are the people that accept that this is a game and start playing it back. They build their own models and simulations. They test their own content before it resonates. They use the same tools to create their own engineered outcomes before they happen. They lose something human, 
but they gain something called power. So what happens next? Well, this infrastructure is gonna keep improving, whether you skip this video, save it or not. The models are gonna get more accurate and get better. The predictions are gonna get more precise. Culture becomes fully computable. In six months, individual creator behavioral twins become accessible. Anyone with 10K followers can simulate their audiences. In 12 months, real-time adaption arrives. Campaigns that evolve based on response. Content that reshapes itself to optimize engagement as it spreads. In around 18 months, predictive life modeling. Systems that know your major decisions before you make them, not just marketing. They can model career paths. They can model relationship outcomes, belief changes. We're building a world where nothing happens by accident anymore, where every viral moment is pre-calculated, every political campaign is predetermined where culture itself becomes a deployment layer for pre-tested patterns. The proof is in the genes. You can pretend that this isn't happening. Keep believing that organic moments in authentic culture aren't pre-calculated in simulations. You can watch as your ability to influence everything just evaporates. Two, you can accept it and adapt, learn the tools, build your own simulations, compete on the new playing field, become complicit in the thing that disturbs you, or you can do something else. You can find a way to be human in a world where humanity is just another variable to optimize. But whatever you choose, understand this. Somewhere right now, even maybe from this video, a simulation is running with your digital twin in it. Testing products you haven't seen, measuring reactions you never had or haven't had yet, predicting choices that you haven't yet made. The future is being pre-tested in simulated versions of us. And so far, we are performing exactly as expected. Preston Rhodes.